Zadrizes bus darīs, kas tev. Now that the House of the Dragon Season 2 trailer has come out, we've gotten a ton of information through the trailer when you relate it back to the leaks. In this video, I want to discuss everything that may potentially happen in House of the Dragon Season 2, Episode 2. Also, I'm going to discuss some Aemon scenes. Before I jump into any of that, please do me a massive favor. If you're a fan of anybody here on YouTube, or you're, if you're a fan of me in particular, the best thing you could ever do for my channel is subscribe. Please click subscribe down below and also, if you're feeling so inclined and you enjoyed my content and you enjoyed this video, slap like on it. Like goes gonna be 420. <laughs> Get it? Okay, so first things first. Episode 2, House of the Dragon, season 2, is going to be one of the most insane episodes of the entirety of the series. Not just season 2, but season 1 included, right? We've got two massive events that have somewhat been confirmed to happen for this episode, right? So before I jump into that, uh, episode 2 is going to be directed by Claire Kilner. Uh, a while back, she followed me on Instagram, and I would frequently send her DMs, and one day she revealed to me that she's going to be directing episodes 2 and 5 of House of the Dragon Season 2. We don't actually know what the episode's going to be titled, but a pretty good guess would be something relating to Blood and Cheese, because Blood and Cheese is supposed to happen in this episode. As a matter of fact, I've been sent leaks through the DMs over on Twitter. Speaking of which, please go follow me at underscore Hunts. But people have mentioned that the cold open for episode 2 House of the Dragon Season 2 is going to be blood and cheese. Like, the episode itself is going to open. It's going to be set up in Episode 1, and then the cold open, before the credits even roll, we're going to see blood and cheese. Now, real quick, let me explain what that is briefly for anybody who's watching this and may be unaware. In the books, after Rhaenyra loses her son Lucerys in, uh, you know, the parlay that was supposed to happen at Storm's End, uh, Damon steps up. He's at Harrenhal, and he sends a message to Rhaenyra. He sends her a raven. He says, a son for a son. Right? And in doing so, he hires Blood, which is a former gold cloak that got removed from the gold cloaks for being too violent, and also Cheese, who's a rat catcher. He hires the two of them via Masaria to sneak into the Red Keep and go and kill Aegon's heir. They're, they, they're tasked with going to go kill Jaehaerys. And the plans kind of go a bit of a ride, right? Like, if you have, you hire these two dudes who are willing to sneak into the Red Keep, one of the most secure places in all of the Seven Kingdoms, they're going to do something criminalistic and that's what they do they actually hog tie alicent and and, and uh hold helena with a knife to her throat and says pick which one of your children you want to die and she ends up picking Maylor, who's the youngest thinking that he's not going to know what the heck is going on right it'd be interesting to see what they do for the tv show because i don't know if helena would willingly do that she probably uh doesn't choose and they just were like well we're here to kill jaharis let's kill him right and supposedly um I know I'm getting super sidetracked, but supposedly there were rumors that Blood and Cheese is actually going to be an accident. They were sent there to kidnap Jaehaerys and use him as a royal hostage, but things go awry and he ends up dying, right? So in canon, uh, they say, Helena, choose which one you want. She picks, uh, like I mentioned, Maelor, thinking that he's not going to know what's going on, and then they kill Jaehaerys, right? And then they tell Maelor, you hear that? Your mom wanted you dead, right? And then they leave with Jaehaerys' head in a sack. Blood is captured at the King's Gate, trying to leave King's Landing, and Mysaria and Cheese are never found. Uh, Cheese being the rat catcher, he probably tried to escape underneath the uh, Red Keep in the tunnels that he used to get there in the first place. Now what's interesting is in canon, after Tyrion escapes, after killing his father Tywin, in a feast for crows, well right before that, in a storm of swords, but uh, it's in... Jamie's POV in A Feast for Crows and Cersei's POV in A Feast for Crows. The events are sort of tied in together of happening with the Storm of Swords. So anyway, Tyrion kills his dad and escapes. And in A Feast for Crows, Jamie goes down there because Jamie was the one who helped release Tyrion. He didn't know he was going to kill, kill their father, Tywin, right? But Jamie's down there. He ends up finding a sack of gold with a Dragon King's head on him. That Dragon King is Viserys I. So this is confirmed, in my opinion, that that sack of gold is what was used to pay Cheese and Blood, and Cheese, who was never found, probably got lost underneath the tunnels and dies. Now what's interesting, the reason why I jumped to that conclusion, is because Jamie pretty much mentions that. They lost several men down there in the depths underneath the tunnels that Magor had built, and uh, it's totally possible that people who even know their way would get lost because the tunnels twist and turned and it's so dark. So anyway, getting way back on track here. In the TV show, once Blood and Cheese goes down with the cold open for episode 2, supposedly Aegon isn't in the castle. He's out drinking with his buddies in the Red Keep. And that scene that we see of him walking up to the Iron Throne in the throne room, um, 
Supposedly that scene of Aegon walking up to the throne is right after Blood and Cheese happens, and this is before Aegon has been informed of the events. He's kind of just strolling in like, Hello mate, how you doing? I'm the king, everything's good here. Now remember, take these leaks with a grain of salt. We don't actually know if this is how uh, the show will go down. Nothing is confirmed until it airs on our screens, right? But now that the trailers come out, we can kind of confirm certain things. So supposedly, after Blood and Cheese happens, and this is the next day, uh, Aemon tries to console and comfort Helena, but she's too hysterical. This makes Aemon harden and he supposedly from that point forward from that moment forward he has this take no prisoners type of persona or archetypal villain character right so uh, they may not be confirming that helena and aemond have uh, an affair and that those are actually his kids but supposedly this scene makes him harden because he sees how distraught and how hurt helena is so we'll see how that goes down on the tv show now supposedly the uh, image of Aemond sitting at the table, uh, kind of just chilling in the dimly lit room. That's when he first arrives from episode one. That's when he first arrives back from Storm's End after killing Lucerys. And he's having a conversation with his mother. And then Aegon walks in and sort of ruins the scene because supposedly Aegon is super proud that Aemond killed, uh, you know, their nephew or their bastard nephew rather. But ultimately, uh, he it's a win for the greens so it'll be interesting to see how that scene supposedly goes down uh after Aegon finds out about blood and cheese he ends up uh immediately makes plans with sir Arik to enact uh the cardio brothers duel and i'll explain that here in a second because that was the other major event that was supposed to happen in house of the dragon season two episode two but real quick as a side note there were several leaked scenes that we got with Aemond and Kristen cole and this is most likely the battle at rook's rest Right? So in the scene, we can see Aemon sort of practicing his sword fighting, and there wasn't footage. These are pictures that I'm showing you. Right? But Aemon's kind of swinging his sword, uh, getting ready for battle. He's wearing light armor, so I would assume this is just like his morning workout routines. They have to keep the same theme uh, with these characters. And remember, we saw Aemon practicing with Kristen Cole in Season 1 Hardcore. He almost took off Kristen Cole's face with a mace. Remember when he used the spiked mace to crash through Kristen's sword that was insane or shield that was insane so they're sort of keeping the theme with that we see Aegon uh, or sorry we see Aemon from these leaks practicing his sword play keeping up with it he uh, Kristen Cole's a bit of a mentor towards him uh in these scenes or you know in the higher def images that we got from the trailer we know at this point so this is episode four Rook's Rest we know at this point Aemon uh, or sorry Kristen Cole has already handed the king so this is after Aegon has removed his grandfather, Sir Otto, as his hand, and he's placed Kristen Cole as his hand. Now, Kristen Cole is a man of action, so I would assume that after Blood and Cheese happens, Aegon's going to need to blame someone for it, because really, the blame goes to himself, but he was out drinking, so he probably is going to blame his grandfather, Sir Otto, and this is when he makes uh, Kristen Cole's hand of the king. So we got the scenes of Aemon and Kristen fighting, and then eventually, Kristen gives a speech and Rook's Rest happens. Now, if you're unaware, there's supposedly quite a big twist that happens with Rook's Rest for the TV show. In canon, basically, Rainey shows up, willingly accepts her death, because once she gets there and she arrives to the battle, she sees that there's not just one dragon, Sunfire, but there's also another dragon, Vagar. So she willingly goes into the fight, ends up dying horrifically, her body is found next to her charred, burned dragon's corpse, and it's unrecognizable, right? Uh, Pretty much, it's going to be a similar way in the TV show, but the big twist is that Aegon and Aemon have a massive argument beforehand, and Aemon sort of sits back and lets Aegon go and kill uh, Rhaenys for himself, right? A basically, Aegon wants all the glory for himself, and in doing so, he kind of screws himself up, because ultimately, uh, Aemon not taking part of the battle causes him to suffer the burns. So basically, they're fighting, uh, Rhaenys quickly gets the upper hand, uh, Aegon gets burned briefly, and then Aemon realizes that Aegon could potentially die, so that's when he joins the battle, and in doing so, he bum rushes into the two dragons, knocking them sideways, and Vagar lets out a gout of flame, it doesn't mention whether it's intentional or unintentional, but that gout of flame is what actually burns Aegon, and, and removes him 
from the story for quite a good chunk in canon and it's going to happen on the tv show he may not be gone as long but ultimately from that point forward from Aegon being greatly wounded and taken out in the fight at Rook's with rest with Rhaenys whether it's caused by Vega or not we will see when the show airs but supposedly from that point forward this is when Aemon becomes Prince Regent and he's basically the acting king for the green sides his actions directly lead to the fall of King's Landing because after Rook's rest he realizes that Daemon his uncle Daemon has a foothold for the Blacks in the heart of the Riverlands at Harrenhal, and he decides he wants to lead most of the Green forces to Harrenhal to go and take back the Riverlands, thinking that it will be a massive blow to his half-sister and the Blacks. When he does so, he leaves King's Landing defenseless, and Aemon uh, didn't receive word that Daemon had left Harrenhal. So Daemon flies at Dragonstone, him and Rhaenyra mount up, and then they go and take King's Landing. And that's probably how House of the Dragon Season 2 is going to end. We actually gotten a couple of these other images of Aemon at Harrenhal, and supposedly he ends up putting the garrison to the sword. This is what he does in canon. Uh, it's interesting because he does the exact opposite of what Daemon does. When Daemon takes Harrenhal, he puts everyone in prison, and he realizes that some of them can be used for royal hostages. But Aemon, relating back to that take no prisoners, blood and cheese moment with Helena earlier uh, on in the season, he puts everyone to the sword, and we see him in some of these images. There was a video that went along with this, but I'm not going to show it in this video, but we see him beheading someone. If I had to guess, it's probably the Castellan, Sir Simon Strong, the guy that Damon initially locks up. They'll probably give him a few scenes because he was uh, a listed character. Like they announced him uh, who's going to be playing him. And then also, we have the Carjo Brothers duel. And I'm not going to spend too much time talking about this. I talked about this a bunch over the filming process for Asshole the Dragon Season 2. But basically, these two dudes, Eric and Arik, are my friends. They follow me on Instagram in real life. I was hoping that they would have a longer run on the show. But it seems like their faithful fight is going to happen in Episode 2. It's possible it could happen later. But all of the leaks are saying that the Carjo Brothers duel will happen in Episode 2. And it's a direct result of the Blacks doing Blood and Cheese. Right? So... Basically, Eric, Arik on the Greens, is hired by King Aegon to go and sneak into Rhaenyra's keep and kill her. Sneak into Dragonstone and kill Rhaenyra because of what happened with Blood and Cheese. Well, in doing so, he's successful. He gets over to Dragonstone, he takes a little fishing boat, he's not wearing his armor. And when he gets there, he slips on his armor and he makes his way into Dragonstone. He's right outside Rhaenyra's chambers and then out steps Eric of the Blacks. Right? So him and his brother exchange words and eventually they end up dueling in that death Arik greatly wounds Eric and the two of them sort of die in each other's arms is one version of events another version is that Eric on the blacks wounds Arik but takes a gut wound and dies a few days later he kills Eric immediately but then Eric wounds him and he uh, Eric for the blacks dies a few days later so we'll see how they do it on the tv show but anyway this seems like a perfect point to wrap this video up don't worry much much more content coming if you want something right now go join my patreon for just a few bucks i'm uploading there very frequently and most of the videos that i put up there will never see the light of day of youtube so i can kind of be myself unedited unfiltered you can join for just a few bucks and also it greatly helps me out either way if you can't do that thank you so so much for watching please subscribe to me here on youtube and slap a like on this i want to give a big shout out to the executive producers of this video they are brianne johnson the North must remember Destiny Phillips, Mix Queen Phillips 420, Phillips 420, <laughs> and also Pebbles 83. Uh, thank you all so so much for watching. I know not until Trisas Putari is Costaur.